last class we saw something about operational voltage amplifier, how the synthesis is done and how the analysis is made for any given op amp and how the important parameters are evaluated. In today's class, we will discuss operational transconductance amplifier. As I told you earlier, it does not really matter what operational uh, purpose for which it is going to be used addition, subtraction, integration, differentiation, etcetera. As long as the op amp has one of the four types of characteristic with forward transfer parameter being very high, it can serve the purpose. So, the second category which was uh, prevalent for a long time. In fact, this is not uh, something that has come about recently. In this particular configuration, the operational transconductance amplifier uh, was uh, in existence, particularly RCA. They had fabricated this op amp long ago, even before the operational amplifier for MOS VLSI came into prominence. So, this was an SSI circuit which was using uh, CMOS structure okay. and uh, the basis of this is again the differential amplifier here you can see differential amplifier okay, at the input. So, V 1 V 2. So, V 1 minus V 2 is going to be equal to V i. So, that is the input voltage, differential input voltage. This is converted into signal current which is G m times V i. I know we know how to evaluate the value of G m. Knowing the operating current of this transistor as I naught by 2, we can evaluate the G m of the trans uh, pair at the operating point. So, the change in current in this is I naught by 2 minus G m V i, I naught by 2 plus G m V i, this being the constant current. This is a normal transfer of current that happens when I apply a voltage V 1 minus V 2 equal to V i. Now, this current is now made to go through a current mirror. Okay. So, this current is going to get reflected here as an identical current I naught by 2 minus G m V i using this current mirror. Okay. This current I naught by 2 plus G m V i is again mirrored onto this side, but with a ratio of W by L ratio corresponding to not 1 is to 1, but 1 is to alpha, in which case current is going to be alpha times that. Okay. So, a current boosting has occurred. So, I naught by 2 plus, okay, uh, actually this is also going to be alpha I naught. Right? alpha, that alpha is going to appear because of the ratio here. Alpha times I naught by 2 plus alpha G m V i, alpha times I naught by 2 minus alpha times G m V i because this current again is reflected onto this side, okay. current mirror. From here it is converted okay, onto this side. So, we have now one current source, another sink, current source giving a current of alpha I naught by 2 plus alpha G m V i, current sink which is alpha I naught by 2 minus alpha G m V i. So, output current that is pumped out. This and this, same ratio, right. So, these are the output transistors operating at alpha times I naught by 2, higher current, right. So, because of the W by L ratio being different, that's all. Okay, K ratios being big different. Okay, so 
that is how we have been able to do in the case of uh, bipolar transistor current mirror also. By changing the area, we could change the current ratio. So, we have now obtained an output current which is 2 times alpha times g m into v i and this is a current output. Okay. It can be in this direction or in that direction depending upon v i. Okay. You can source current or sink current. So, this is a true what transconductance type amplifier. Output is a current source, input is a voltage. This voltage input V i is converted on into this kind of current output. Okay. So, what is the transfer parameter in this case? 2 alpha g m. Transconductance is 2 alpha g m. So, wha what is the parameter that we are going to use for this analysis? So, in the operational voltage amplifier, I said ideal okay, parameter is g parameter. Right? G21 was voltage gain. In an operational current amplifier, okay, ideal parameter was H parameter, H21 was current gain. In this particular case, yes, what is the difficulty? Y parameter, right? So, the trans this is going to be expressed in terms of Y parameter, okay? This is 0, this is 0, this is 0, and this is going to be Y21. So, all the other parameters have to go to 0. Okay. Is this clear? That means, y i or y 1 1 is 0, this is also called what? y f, y 2 1 or y f, y 1 1 or y i is 0. That means, input impedance should be high, this is high infinity, very nearly infinity. Output admittance should be 0 or output impedance should be very high, this is so. Obviously, now if you are going to proceed towards design, we will uh, maximize this as much as possible. That is why this alpha effort in boosting up the okay, y 2 1 by having alpha also is done here. So, if you want to make it go towards further ideality in the synthesis, what should you do? Instead of a current mirror of this type, we should go for better current mirrors, either Wilson current mirror or Casco type of structure, so that output impedance is going to be boosted up further. Right? So, you can replace these current mirrors by all the modified current mirrors that we have learnt. Okay? It will become a better operational transconductance amplifier. Okay. So, please uh, try to draw the structure of that particular improved operational transconductance amplifier and see for yourself how the structure looks. Evaluate its parameters, the various parameters associated in terms of the operation uh, that is mass parameter. Okay. So, you can see that even though this idea is pretty simple, because people were habituated to understanding only operational voltage amplifier better than this, this was not being so sought after, even though it was readily available along with 741 and other op amps, this was also available. And, uh, <coughs> The advantage of this being the frequency compensation in this case is pretty simple. Because this is a high impedance point, I can connect the output capacitor itself okay, as the compensating capacitor, which was not possible in the case of operational 
voltage amplifier because output impedance was low and time constant would have become very low whereas we wanted a dominant time constant to come into picture in frequency compensating in this particular case therefore this structure has a very easy frequency compensation procedure that you can just simply use the output capacitor itself or you can put an output capacitor here in order to make the circuit become stable okay at the required uh, application is this clear so that is a uh, major advantage of this other other than this obviously if you want to use it the load resistance is going to be appearing here okay and therefore the voltage gain will be simply 2 alpha gm times rl so you can see that the equivalent circuit will be that this is going to be a current source okay with 2 alpha gm if i put it uh, this way right i can put it either way okay if let us say we will stick to this convention okay this is the vi okay grounded and then the output impedance of the transconductance amplifier which is pretty high okay which you can evaluate and then the load if any if you are putting and the capacitor that you might be putting okay so the voltage that is going to be developed is going to be 2 alpha gm into r not parallel rl divided by 1 plus scl okay into r not parallel which can be treated as twice alpha gm r not parallel rl is nothing but earlier we have been considering this as what as earlier a not okay and 1 plus s by the omega dominant here is going to be 1 over C L into R naught parallel R. So, this is the nature of gain variation of this operational transconductance amplifier which is frequency compensated already. Okay. So, <coughs> now okay. A naught divided by 1 plus S by omega D where A naught is going to be twice alpha gm R naught parallel RL and omega D is going to be 1 over C L R naught. These are the parameters of importance. Now, after this, the use of this is going to be similar to the operational amplifier, voltage amplifier that we are accustomed to using. There is no difference. However, since this does not contain any resistor internally, and you can apply a current biasing here through the external resistance, right? You can pump in a current here, and this current can be varied, and GM is going to depend upon current, and therefore you can change the uh, gain as well as the bandwidth, okay, using this current of the structure. Is this clear? So I naught can be used to change the gain of the structure. 
Okay. So, it becomes a current controlled operational transconductance amplifier. The conductance part can be current control. Is it clear? So, this is one of the uh, uses of transconductance amplifier. The gain of this becomes current control. That current can be obtained by another voltage, let us say. So, if that is the case, it is a candidate for what? I have output equal to input times the gain. The gain in turn is current control which can be made another voltage control. So, it is multiplier. So, uh, this is uh, something that we can specially use it for straight away. Right? Gain control amplifiers okay, can be used for operation of multiplication or modulation, demodulation, etcetera, etcetera. So, that is one advantage of this transconductance type of that is where it is it was primarily being used originally. Okay. So we have now seen uh, two of the most useful types of operational amplifiers. It is time before we go to the other two types which are not so popular yet. Okay. Um, the some of the important applications of these operational amplifiers, which were responsible for ICs to emerge with these as building blocks. Okay. So, what we are now going to discuss will be how these operational amplifiers are used in other ICs, which are also coming out as uh, SSIs or MSIs okay, uh, for uh, multiple. Uh, usage that is repeated usage as building blocks. So, in that context uh, we would first start with most important application of operation amplifier ever that is instrumentation amplifier IC. Okay. IC instrumentation amplifier. So, let us see. Just as I mentioned that even though voltage regulator is a very trivial uh, application of uh, let us say the differential amplifier or uh, feedback amplifier, it is used to the maximum extent. The demand for such an IC is the highest ever. Similarly, Instrumentation amplifier, obviously the name suggests, this is the first amplifier stage for any instrumentation application, where you are sensing the signal from the sensor and now you would like to amplify it sufficiently. So, this is basically the pre-amplifier stage. It has lot of responsibilities okay, and it is use, use, uses uh, prevalent in almost every instrumentation system block. So, we have to know thoroughly about what additional features the instrumentation amplifier must have, how to build such instrumentation amplifiers using these active blocks that we are uh, now trying to explain to you, like maybe transconductance type of amplifier or voltage amplifier, any of these blocks we can build a, an instrumented amplifier. Let us see how we can build this using operational voltage amplifier. Okay. That is how since operational voltage amplifier came into uh, existence first, let us see how this configuration uh, is going to be synthesized. Instrumentation normally involves for example, a measurement of pressure, uh, force, weight etcetera, wherein let us say a strain gauge is used, a strain gauge bridge is used okay, to convert this uh, pressure, 
force or a weight into a corresponding change in resistance okay, in a bridge. So, this has to be amplified, this signal that is obtained is going to be very small level and this has to be amplified. Obviously, a bridge measurement means okay, it is a differential measurement of voltage let us say. Then we would like to use straight away a feedback configuration. This is what is called difference amplifier using an op amp. All of you are aware of this usage, very simple usage of this uh, op amp as a difference amplifier. Let us say these are all equal resistors. Then obviously V naught is going to be equal to, we can show if this is let us say V1, this is V2 is going to be equal to V 1, if you just check this superposition theorem you can apply, V 1 is going to appear here as V 1 by 2. Okay. This is grounded, so this is nothing but an amplifier of gain 2. So, 2 into half, so V 1 is going to appear as V 1. <coughs> v 2 on the other hand when you ground this, is going to appear as minus V2. This clearly is something <coughs> that will determine V1 minus V2, the difference in the two voltage. This is that is why I call difference amplifier. So, this difference amplifier, if I am using an ideal operational amplifier, is having what is called as differential gain equal to. 1, okay, because differential signal is V 1 minus V 2. Common mode gain is 0, because if I make V 1 equal to V 2, okay, output has to be 0. So, ideally speaking, this particular difference amplifier has a CMRR which is infinity, but what is not borne in mind is the fact that these resistors cannot be made exactly equal. In spite of the fact that you might have a very good operational amplifier with infinite CMRR, let us say, if these resistors are having certain tolerance, let us call this as 1 plus or minus delta, 1 plus or minus delta. That means, the resistance have a tolerance of delta. Okay. Then, obviously, right, this CMRR of this structure is not going to be having okay, any infinite value, it is going to be finite. Therefore, we should know in a design of such a structure, what the CMRR of this structure is going to be. Let us see, CM or a common mode rejection ratio. This is nothing but differential mode gain divided by common mode gain. That we can quickly arrive at. Let us apply purely differential mode voltage that is V d by 2 and minus V d by 2 and check the thing. Okay. That is going to be resulting in uh, A d which is very nearly equal to 1 any case right is going to be very nearly equal to 1. So, A d is going to be very nearly equal to 1. I am saying very nearly equal to 1 because there is a tolerance of delta associated with it. There will be some variation that, that we are not bothered. But what matters now is that when V 1 is equal to V 2, what is the output voltage? That corresponds to an output which is AC times okay, VC. Right? So, 
So what is this value of AC? So if you evaluate this value of AC, how do you evaluate it? You can actually now uh, compute the gain. Under the situation, this is R into 1 plus or minus delta. Okay, this is also. So the voltage here is not going to be Vc by 2 any longer. Okay, nominally it will be Vc by 2, but it can deviate from Vc by 2 by an extent of 1 will be C. It will be here. Uh, if this is R into 1 plus delta, you have to consider here R into 1 minus delta or if this is R into 1 minus delta, you have to consider here R into 1 plus delta, the worst case situation. So in any case, it is going to deviate from half by an extent of 2 delta. Okay? Is this clear or not? So uh, instead of uh, that, I will rather put it in a different manner. Assume that these are all different values of resistors R1, R2, R3, R4. Now you can arrive at the gain. Okay. So what will be the gain? This is Vc. This is going to be Vc into R1 by R1 plus R2. This voltage is same as that. Okay. So this voltage is Vc into R1 by R1 plus R2. And therefore, the current in this is Vc minus this, which is Vc into R2 by R1 plus R2. That is the, that divided by what? R3. That is the current. Same current is going to flow through R4. So, develop a voltage which is R4. Okay. So, this is the voltage across R4. And original voltage was Vc into R1 by R1 plus R2. That minus this is nothing but the output voltage. Clear? So this is nothing but, okay, you can take R1 by R1 plus R2 out, okay, which is 1 plus R2 by R1. And this one will be 1 minus R2 R4 by R1 that is in general the common mode gain of any such difference amplifier. So now you substitute all these values which we have earlier mentioned. What is it? 1 minus R, 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 R. Okay. Nominal values okay, get cancelled. It will become 1. But instead of this, you will have 1 plus or minus delta square divided by 1 minus or plus delta squared. Okay. Have you understood this? This divided by the lower denominator is going to be 1 plus again r r giving you 1. That means 2 plus some delta which we are ignoring compared to 2. But here we cannot ignore this okay, compared to 1 because it is coming as a difference. So, this factor is going to be how much? Binomial theorem you can apply. This is going to be 1 plus 2 delta. This will be 1 minus 2 delta. 1 plus 2 delta by 1 minus 2 delta is 1 plus 4 delta. So, 1, 1 gets cancelled. So, you get minus 4 delta divided by 2 or This is an important relationship which you should remember throughout because as a design engineer, you should be quickly able to tell what kind of tolerance of resistive components you must select in order to get good common mode gain. That means close to 0. Now just see, if you use 1 percent tolerance component, what happens here? This is 1 percent. That means 1 over 100 then common mode gain is simply 1 over 50 and CMRR of the structure is simply 50, which is grossly inadequate for most of the instrumentation application. 1 percent component 
one percent resistor is called a precision resistor. So, in spite of using precision resistor, you are not achieving any good performance from this instrumentation amplifier. This is the mistake committed by most of the instrumentation amplifier design engineer, right? They ignore the fact that the tolerance of these components become very important in design of instrumentation amplifier. Okay? Actually, if the tolerance is poor, you are not actually uh, amplifying your difference signal in an efficient manner. You are amplifying apart from the difference signal, the common word signal also and the common word output is coming as the error term. Okay? So, this kind of design now tells you that this difference amplifier is basically no good in spite of using a very good operational amplifier. It has a CMRR which is 1 divided by 2 delta. How does one improve this okay, without really getting involved with very precision components, which are not really available in an integrated circuit. All these co components should be within the IC, which means that the tolerance is still not good. Externally, if you are making a discrete component version, you can maybe select okay, 0.1 percent. Okay, resistors, etc., fairly uh, easily. Right, but this is not the case in integrated circuit manufacture. Okay, for making the fabrication very easy, you do not want to trim any component. Okay, and therefore you would like to obtain the structure with the tolerance of components available in the technology. If such is the case, right, you cannot make any good instrumentation amplifier using the present day technology as such. Right? So, how to get over this problem? That is when the circuit designer comes into picture again. Right? The device man says this is it, the tolerance is this, I cannot give you better tolerance, but still we would like to design instrumentation amplifiers with better CMR than this. Okay? So, the circuit engineer now comes to the rescue of this system design. Let us see what happens. Let us once again consider <coughs> the same structure. We will use the same structure, but we will attach on to this something else. R, R, R with tolerance equal to delta. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not the only property of the instrumentation amplifier that is important. CMRR has to be very good for any input stage, like the case of an oscilloscope, for example. At the oscilloscope input terminal, also, if it is a differential kind of measurement, the CMRR of the input stage amplifier should be excellent at all frequencies that under which you are going to use the oscilloscope. So, that part of the circuit takes most of the effort of a design engineer. Okay? Now, let us see. This is going to load the bridge. If it loads the bridge, again it is going to cause disturbance of the balance. That should not happen. So, an instrumentation amplifier should not load the bridge. That means, there should be a buffer so, therefore, it is obvious that we can modify this structure by using buffer stages. Right. So, instead of applying V1 and V2 here, we will now apply V1 and V2 here. This has not changed anything other than making this difference amplifier not load the bridge. Okay? That is taken care of. Otherwise, there will be asymmetric uh, kind of this thing loading here. Now, 
if you are using a buffer like that, you would like to obviously use instead of unity gain, maybe some gain. R1 and R2, or actually let us put it as RA and RB, so that it will be different from. So what will be the now gain of each? This will be V2 into 1 plus RB by RA, and this will be V1 into 1 plus RB by RA. But what happens to the CMRR of this structure? The differential mode gain has increased by 1 plus RB by RA. Okay? But what happens to the CMRR of this structure? Remains the same as before because both voltages are individually amplified as 1 plus RB by RA. So, if you connect these to common voltage VC, that VC also is going to be amplified by 1 plus RB by RA. So, the CMRR of this structure has not changed okay, if you just boost up both V2 and V1. The problem of this structure comes only because V2 and V1 are independently coming into picture in each of the stages. And this voltage is V1, this voltage is V2. The current in this is V2 by RA, current in this is V1 by RA. So, why not therefore, okay, remove this from the ground and connect it together, so that the currents become dependent on V1 and V2. And the current is going to be not fixed by V1 or V2 alone individually, but V1 minus V2. It is that current that is getting amplified. Okay? So, if this is V1 and this is V2, the current in this is going to be, for example, V2 minus V1 by RE. Right. So, now let us see what happens. If V1 is equal to V2, there is no differential current. So, if V1 is equal to V2, no current occurs here. That is good because when there is a common mode voltage, there is no current flowing in this resistance. That means this voltage is going to be exactly same as this voltage. This voltage is going to be exactly same as this voltage, Vc, Vc. Both are going to be same. Okay? So, that means this structure is not amplifying the common mode voltage at all, simply because I am now lifting up the ground and connecting to the other point and therefore, it is only amplifying differential signal. This is one of the most useful three amplifier instrumentation amplifier, okay, which is uh, used almost universally in most of the applications. You can see here therefore, the output voltage therefore, is going to be V2 plus V2 minus V1 by Ra into Rv. That is the drop across this. Right? And what is the voltage here? V1, this V1, minus V2 minus V1 by Ra into Rv. That means you can now make Ra as small as you please and get it to amplify only the differential mode signal V2 minus V1. The common mode signal still remains what? Vc, V2 plus V1, this voltage plus this voltage divided by 2 is the common mode. That remains same as before. So, common mode gain of this additional structure is 1, whereas its differential mode gain is this minus this is how much? V2 minus V1 plus V2 minus V1 into 
R B by R A. R its differential mode gain is 1 plus R B by R A. Is this clear? Its differential mode gain is going to be 1 plus R B by R A and the differential mode gain of the entire structure is 1 plus R B by R A because this difference amplifier has differential mode gain of 1 and common mode gain of the entire structure is going to be 2 delta. So, the CMRR of this entire structure which is independent of okay, the tolerance of R B by R A. Right? R B by R A has the normal effect. That means, if there is a 10 percent variation, there is going to be 10 percent variation in the gain. That is going to be normal. On the two R B's are different. Oh, this is the thing. These R B's, if they are different, there is going to be a small difference. That is all. That difference is going to get added on to a huge value of V C itself. It is going to be V C into R B 1 minus R B 2 by R A. Okay? So, even though it is going to be boosted up, it is going to be boosted up to a minor extent. So, common mode gain is very nearly equal to 1 itself. Is this clear? Even if there is difference in these two R B's to a certain extent, 10 percent. Okay? So, because there is a common mode voltage V C, that to that you are going to add R B 1 minus R B 2 divided by R A. So, it is not going to matter. Whereas, the differential mode gain is going to be totally determined by R B divided by R A. R A tolerance does not come into picture at all okay, in the differential mode. So, R A can be now independently varied. This is another fact. You can vary it by just varying that value and you get a variable gain Okay, the instrumentation amplifier. Is this clear? So now, obviously, the CMRR can be made pretty high by making R B by R A pretty high. In spite of therefore using poor tolerance resistive component within the IC, we can achieve reasonable value for the CMRR for the instrumentation amplifier if you are prepared to going for this 3 amplifier structure. Is it understood? So, <coughs> there are some minor variations uh, about instrumentation amplifier. You can obtain an instrumentation amplifier using 2 op amps also. Okay? That configuration is, so please take this as a homework problem. which has not become popular primarily because it is not symmetric. The signal handling ability of the op amps will differ, whereas here signal handling ability will be the same, required to be the same, because common mode voltage appears here, whereas here different values of voltages will come at this point. So, last signal property is going to be different. So, it is not a popular one, but this is a possible configuration. Again, all these resistances have to be equal and show that this instrumentation amplifier also has its gain okay, dependent on R dash and these R have to be exactly identical. If there is a tolerance of delta, okay, there will be finite value for CMRR, obtain the CMRR of this structure and the gain, com differential mode gain. Okay. Please work this out, but this is not really available as an IC. 
what is available as an IC, the entire thing is available as an integrated circuit okay, for the user. 